you look, it's a difference between a 10 figure and a six figure grid reference. It's out by uh, quite a way. I think a six figure is like the size of a football field. A 10 figure is the size of a parking lot. So that's a difference. You can't always find um, 10 figure grid references for these on the internet, unfortunately. But we found it, you know, look around a bit, spend a bit of time doing it. So yes, I was going to tell you about this crash, wasn't I? How rude of me. We'll get to get it behind us so you can see it while I'm talking. And um, I've got it open on the interweb because I was just looking at where it was. So, this is being used for a night time cross country exercise. Um, again, uh, 12th of March 1944. So I think all of these, that must have been a hell of a year for crashes. Um, there was three crew all killed. So they were going from RAF Colvely near Lampwich. Wrexham Litchfield at a height of 2,300 foot. They got it airborne at 22 minutes past 10 and sort of went on the initial short leg. But again, wind speed was increasing. And that seems to be a key thing in these crashes because obviously they haven't got the technology these days. They've done a time based on a certain wind speed, their route map make, uh, their route sort of uh, planning. And this is what uh, does make a mess. Uh, they got a bearing uh, from Calverly while in the Wrexham area. And they were heard by another aircraft at about quarter past 11, trying to contact Calvary to obtain another QDM, which is a bearing from the airfield. Uh, but they were not received by the ground station and they went unanswered. And nothing further was heard of the crew or aircraft after this point. Five days later, the badly broken up wreck was discovered here on Shining Tor, along with the bodies of the three crewmen who had been killed instantly. Now I have read another story that states that actually they were found all sitting by the side of the aircraft and had died of hyperthermia. So I don't know which one's true. I'll do a bit of digging on that. Either way, um, it really is quite sad. It was travelling in a southerly direction and a, and a gentle turn to port when it struck the ground with a port wing before flying through the wall, which runs along here, I think, somewhere. Um, and then it began to disintegrate. Uh, the log was recovered from the wrecked aircraft and he had noted making calls with no times but estimated around half past 11 but it took them five days to find this wreck very sad indeed that I'll take some pictures and then what I'll do is show my respects as I always do thank them for the service and whatever it's very sad indeed and then we're going to head on down here to where we're going to find another wreck site with two aircraft Okay, uh, oh yeah, this guy was RAF, not um, all the others were, I think, American Air Force. I think the next one is. Anyway, we're going to carry on down there now. Oxford, Mark 1, LX745 of a number 11 part advanced flying unit in the RAF crashed on Shining Tour on the 12th of March 1944. The aircraft was being used for a night cross country exercise from RAF Colvin near Nantwich. The briefed route was to have been Calverley, Wrexham, Litchfield, Calverley at a height of 2,300 foot. They got airborne at 22.22 hours and headed on the initial short leg from just west of Nantwich to Wrexham. At this time the wind speed was increasing. The wireless operator obtained a QDR, a bearing from the Shet airfield, bearing from Calverley while in the Wrexham area at 22.34 and was heard by another aircraft at 23.15 trying to contact Calverley from the Litchfield area to an, obtain a QDM. These calls, although heard by other aircraft, were not received by the ground station and so went unanswered and nothing was heard of the crew or aircraft after this point. It was five days later that the badly broken up wreck was discovered on the northern end of Shining Tor along with the bodies of the three crewmen who had all been killed instantly. Cunningham cites a local shepherd and Mr Albert Heathcote who said the bodies of the men were found sitting beside their crashed aircraft. They had survived the impact but died of exposure waiting for help to arrive. This detail about the crew is not recorded elsewhere but that's not to say the shepherd got it wrong. The aircraft had been flying in a southerly direction and in a gentle turn to port when it struck the ground with its port wing before flying through the wall which runs along the Cheshire-Derbyshire boundary. The aircraft then began to disintegrate and was scattered across the moor to around where the parts remain today. The wireless operator's log was recovered from the wrecked aircraft and he had noted making calls with no times but they were estimated to stop around 23.30 by using the log of the aircraft which had heard the calls as a guide. The 
Court of Inquiry in the accident held in the weeks after the crash concluded that the position of the aircraft had been miscalculated while flying in zero visibility with fluctuating wind speeds. With an hour before takeoff, the wind being about 35 miles an hour, decreasing to 15 miles an hour at takeoff and then to around 50 miles an hour at the time of the crash. It was thought that the drift caused by the weather was not compensated for as a gain in wind strength was unknown to the pilots. The crash occurred roughly at the time the aircraft would have been expected back at Calverley, and so it was thought that the pilots had descended through the clouds on ETA over base. The failure to hear or answer any radio calls was put down to the ground station working with another aircraft at the time when these calls were made. In addition to the findings of the court, it was noted that the darky radio navigation aid was not used and it was recommended that crews should maintain regular contact with base with bearings being requested at regular intervals. The three crew are all buried in Chester's Blackham Cemetery.